it's not looking so good for Halo Infinite, is it? It's all just been bad news. Bad news, bad news, bad news. Look at it all. Hold on, that's nothing to do with Halo. Right, we have had a lot of bad news about Halo lately, right? It's not good. You can tell by the sad music, it's not good. So, I decided not to do a bad video on Halo, but a good video on Halo. So what we've got here is Ruby's Rebalanced Halo, which takes a game that I thought was pretty much already perfect and tweaks it to make it even more perfect. You can see from these four nice little bullet points here, they've reworked the vehicles, the AI, weapons, they've uh, expanded some encounters and level design. Every facet of the game has seen more polished, and they've also added a whole bunch of content that was previously cut from the game. And all links to this will be in the description. If you have a look under here, they've got two versions of it. They've got the big version, which has everything, and the light version, which just has the key sandbox changes and quality of life improvements, but it will allow you to use the anniversary graphic, as this big one with everything in it won't let you use the anniversary graphic for technical reasons, which is fine, because I think the classic graphics for Halo are still fantastic. Fantastic. I'm using the full version. Person's a genius, by the way. They've done some really good stuff. So yeah, again, all links be in the description to their YouTube channel, to this Nexus mods page, the whole lot. They've got an instructions part at the end of their video on this, so I'll link that in the description. You can watch that, and that will teach you exactly how to install this. I'm just going to be playing it today to have a look at some of the changes that they've made. Now, there was a previous version of this, but it was taken out when the new mod tools came out. So this new version with the new mod tools support has added a whole bunch of cool stuff. Now, Halo 1 was already very well balanced on Legendary, but their tweaks and weapon adjustments and some of the changes with the enemies have really tuned it. It still feels like Halo. It's not like SBV3 which I feel was a bit more quantity over quality. It still feels very Halo C. Anyway, enough talking, let's dive in. The Covenant believe that what they call the silent cartographer is somewhere under this island. The cartographer is a map room that will lead us to Halo's control center. The island has multiple structures and installations. One of them contains the map room. Oh yeah. So already we can see here that this opening area has been changed quite a bit. You can see there's some well you'll see in a minute there's some turrets in the background there. And there's just a whole different roster of enemies. Or just more enemies. Because what they've done is, along with the weapon adjustments, as uh, seen in the bullet points, they've changed the level layout. So the level will actually change quite dynamically, whether you're running on easy or medium or legendary or anything like that. And here we're seeing how much more effective the marines are. We'll see a bit more of this later. So we've got to take these turrets out. These turrets weren't here in the original game. See, the marines are actually kicking ass. I mean, look at them go. I mean, usually on Legendary, they're like all dead by this point. Another one that things have done, fix up the Hunters so they are now extremely dangerous. You can no longer just melee them by jogging around them. So let's take them out very, very quickly. And also on Legendary, there weren't Hunters in this point before. Oh boy. Oh boy. And you can no longer one-shot them with the pistol. Although I did just sort of one-shot it with the plasma pistol there, but that was just because it was already weak. That doesn't count. Come on, come on, come here. There we go. There's also a few little extra things like this that weren't here in the original game, I'm fairly certain. A little extra bits around the level. Another turret here. And look how many marines have survived this. They're usually all dead by this point. And also, ODSTs are present as well. And their aesthetic matches pretty nicely with the existing marines in Halo 1. The vehicles have all been tweaked just to be a little bit more snappier and smoother. To fit into that sandbox a bit more. In some areas, the game has been made a lot less frustrating, and in some areas, it's been made quite a bit more difficult. Oh, that was embarrassing. This bit is quite difficult. As I can see here, I decided to stop filming at this point, because I can see here there's actually Banshees that they've added in. Halo 2's campaign on Legendary was... A crap fest, right? Really unbalanced, really not fun to play. Whereas Halo 1's on Legendary was just consistently fun to play. The entire weapon sandbox is great fun. You can experiment. All the weapons are effective. And when you die, generally, it's your fault that you died, right? Whereas Halo 2 is the opposite of that. 
where you just constantly die all the time. I didn't think Halo 1 needed to be tweaked in any way, but I find that the tweaks that they've applied keep the feel of the original game, but they're just slight adjustments and tunings to what Bungie did. Here we go. There we go. Oop. Oh no. Oh no. The only trouble is we are getting crashes, which is not good at all. Just as I was about to get the Banshee. Oh yeah. So I actually don't mind playing on the uh, on the classic graphics in Halo 1 because I think the classic graphics still hold up. Especially compared to Halo 2, where the graphics, quite frankly, weren't that great in comparison. Which you can see in my video up above. I have previously played Ruby's Rebalanced for Halo 3, Halo 2, and Reach. And they vastly managed to improve those as well, but they those need to be re-released with the new mod tools as well. So I've always loved using the Assault Rifle at uh, medium to longer ranges, and this actually allows for that, because if you control the trigger on the AR now, you can actually shoot to longer range. See, it's a little more accurate when you feather the trigger at range. Whoa. Oh my god. There we go. We all know the music. We all know the routine. Let's try and stealth it. Use the motion sensor to our advantage. Oh no, that glitch is still there. The glitch where the enemy will just randomly turn around on you. That's still there. That's good. Hopefully we'll be able to see a little bit more of how useful the AI is now. Right, rocket launch time. See, the, the Marines seem to shoot a lot more now, rather than little random bursts that don't really do a lot. And they actually can get a lot more damage out downrange, so... There's also tweaks to the Warthog as well, make it accelerate faster. See, the Marines are usually dead by this point, like long dead in Legendary. Oh, we're about to try out the tank. Come on, come on, come on. Tank, 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 tank. Oh my god! Okay, yep, this is another addition. Is that the AI can now pilot vehicles. Oh yes. You heard that right. The marine AI can now pilot vehicles. Let's see if the AI will drive the Warthog. I'm not sure if they're just set to go through certain areas. Doesn't seem like anyone wants to drive the Warthog here. Don't know if that tank's gonna move. It's still awesome. Just means the marine AI has a bit more presence now. Rather than just being utterly useless. Well, what we'll do is we'll take the tank off this dude. Yeah, the uh, gun turret has now been made a lot more accurate on this. Oh, look, he's driving the warthog. He's driving it. Oh, that's brilliant. Is he going to follow me? This is so cool. That warthog's still driving around. Oh boy, here we go, here's one of the new vehicles. Again, it's kind of... Imagine from Halo 2 or 3, but it's been designed and it operates in a way that works in the Halo 1 sandbox. Uh oh. God damn! There we go. Like I said, you really don't want to mess around with hunters anymore. Ooh, yeah. Oh, look at that snow shader. 20 years later, and I still love that snow shader. Do you know what I love more than the snow shader? The ice shader. Here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, ice shader. Uh... 
Oh, and also, as you can see there, there's a uh, engineer, I believe, from Reach. Although it was originally meant to be implemented in Halo 1, they had to cut it. So Ruby has reinserted it into the game. It naturally fits within the sandbox. Hey, the Warhog made it down. Well, it made it down for a bit. Here we go. Rocket Hog. Originally only in the multiplayer, I believe. Let's do this. Let's do this. See, while the acceleration on the hogs has been changed, it's still a little bit marshmallowy on the physics. But I always love those Halo 1 marshmallowy physics, so it doesn't bother me. We got a Banshee. I love that hog has come all this way with us. I love it. It's a shame the tank didn't seem to do that. Holy crap. Now, usually there's invisible elites in here, isn't there? So, let's see. Whoa! Oh my god, that freaked me the hell out. The different location of the elites and those weird sounds from the engineers freaked me out there. Ooh, there's some new dialogue. Yeah, there's a lot of unused dialogue in Halo 1 as well, and... Most of it has been re-added in, as well as some dialogue that didn't make sense in vanilla that's been edited so that it doesn't overlap or it actually aligns with what's going on. I've just realized I've been playing Assault on the Control Room for ages now, and this is going to be difficult to edit down. So I'm going to have a look at another level. Now, one of the more controversial levels in Halo 1, although I loved it, was the library, which Ruby has made some considerable changes to, I believe. So let's see what they've done. We are near the index chamber. Follow me. So it sounds like there's some different sound effects already. Uh, yeah, those are, those are new sound effects. Those sound like sound effects from Halo 2. And that was a lot less flood there as well, I think. Yeah, you can definitely feel the tweaks. Flood feel a little less bullet spongy. Or well, at least the uh, exploding popcorn ones do. This does feel a little bit more smoother in terms of progress. And the flood are a little bit more fun to fight. But then I never really had much of a problem with this level originally. Whoa, there you go. Flamethrower. Oh, yeah. There we go. Look at that. I'm sure there's new ambient noise and new noise from the flood, which does make them a little bit scarier. So it's back here, see if there's any little secrets. They mentioned that they've added vehicles and changed a few things that make a bit more use of the large space here. See, this is new. What's this? Oh, nice, a teleport. It's like the Borg teleporter from Picard Season 1. Interesting. Oh, shielded flood. That's new. That's new to Halo 1. Oh, look, they've still got bits of armor on them. Ooh, very nice. See, stuff like that that's cool. Still feels like it fits in the CE. Oh, my God. In a way, it feels like they've backported all of the good stuff from Halo 2 and 3 and made it fit in with Halo 1. I always felt that SBV 3 backported too much of the bad stuff from the later Halos. Feels like the timing on the explosion of those is a little bit lower. I think they used to take a little bit longer before they actually blew up. There we go. Oh, no. Well, that went wrong. Oh, the shaders on these things as well. Oh, God, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Like, the angle you look at it, it changes it. And then the blue thing going up it. Oh, God. Those sort of late 90s, early 2000s shaders. The early sort of... What the hell was that? Okay, that's new. That's all new. That threw me off a little bit. Christ almighty. 
See, I love that as well, where it just throws a surprise at you. Marine clothing on, UNSC hat, elite armor. Look, the elite armor's like shimmering a bit as well. The light's going, oh, that is so cool. Here we have a busted up wraith, which I'm assuming at some point we're about to gain access to some vehicles. See, it's, it gives you a bit more of a reason now to explore around a bit more, rather than just having a lot of empty space. You can't really use the turrets, but you can just sort of plow through them. Oh, is that a rocket flood? That's a rocket flood. So I suppose it gives you that freedom if you don't really want to fight the flood on foot. And what was that? That's scary as hell. All these new noises and stuff. Quite refreshing to feel freaked out by the flood. So this is new. This corner here now has loads of invisible flood in it. And there were invisible flood in Halo 1 originally, but I think only in one area in the moor, unless I'm mistaken. And also there's this area where there's now lots and lots of invisibility pickup and lots of grenades as well. Oh my god, look at this stuff up here as well. Goopy, goopy flood stuff. Ooh, we have to get a little bit closer to the popcorn, I think, to uh, get them to set off. Oh, Oh boy. Also, Needler Ammo lays around now. I think Needler Ammo was only seen laying around on 343 Gateway Spot. Oh god, and look how nice the lighting and bump mapping looks on this game. On that floor. It still looks good now. Can you still shoot their heads off? Yeah, you can. Good. Whoa! So of course one of the more frustrating levels to begin on is two betrayals where it gives you nothing but a plasma pistol and sets you up against a number of sentinels. So let's see how they've adjusted this to make it a little bit more of a fair start. Look out. There we go, now have an assault rifle and a plasma pistol. And the adjusted assault rifle should hopefully be a bit more useful in this area though. Oh my god! Oh but there's more weapons laying around, okay. Sentinels seem a little less spongy as well. Oh, hey, Marines! Wow, so this area has been made a lot more fair. I do like that I've added more Marines in. However, I hope there's not too many Marines in this bit because this level kind of was creepy by the fact that all the Marines were basically dead by that point. Oh, yeah. Although, actually, to be fair, that means you'll get, like, four-way fights between you, the Covenant, Flood, and Marines all at the same time. So, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Oh, yeah, so all those empty cases laying around. That's pretty cool. So, there's some extra weapons up here. Let's take a sniper rifle. Ooh. Ooh. Hello, this is all new, isn't it? Oh, wow! This is awesome! Whoa! Oh my god. I like how the game engine on PC still has that optimization where if there's too much going on, it will stop displaying the muzzle flash from the sort of. See, this I like. It has completely changed this level right up. I think the shotgun's got a bit of tighter spread now. This is awesome. See, it feels a little less creepy and lonely with the Marines, but... That's a trade-off that's worth it, because this is a proper battle. There's just so much more going on. Third rocket should do it. I wonder if there's any weapons down here. Hey, invisibility. There we go. That'll do. Oh, look at that. Crash dropship.
Look at the chaos. Up we go. Whoa, oh my god. That was a bad idea. I love all the changes that they've made. Again, they're all just really clever changes that fit so well into the sandbox of Halo CE. It's not like SPV3, there's just a bit too much to it. This is just perfecting perfection. That's what it is. Thanks for watching. Do check it out. Again, all links in the description for this. Go check it out. Go install it if you've got the MCC. It's so worth getting. And keep an eye out for the re-releases of their Halo 2 rebalanced, Halo 3 rebalanced, ODST rebalanced, and Halo 4 rebalanced. Because, my god, it fixes those games up so well. Again, Halo Reach is another game that from the last version of the update they did for it. Really tweaked it and actually made it so that you didn't run out of ammo every five minutes. I'll cover those at a future point when they're out. For now, leave a like, leave a subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And also, let me know what you think about Halo Infinite as well. I'll see you in the next video.